Well, since we're all quiet, um, folks are welcome to stand. If you want to sit, we are probably, I'm gonna give a little bit of an introduction and an overview. It takes about five to 10 minutes. And you can sit anywhere because I'll explain what we're gonna do shortly and it'll involve getting up and moving to other seats. So feel free to stand, sit, grab food, whatever works. And welcome. So I'm Megan Roy, I'm the superintendent of Washington Central. I've met many of you, but not all of you. Um, really excited to have you all here uh, and appreciate you coming out to what we hope is the first of several different and several different kinds of conversations with our community. A um, Couple of logistics. Like I said, oh, I think I'm not supposed to stand under there so I don't squeak. Um, I am gonna overview what we're gonna do, give you a little background information right now. Um, there are people, and it sounds like we ran out of, we may be running out of name tags, but uh, folks have name tags, and if you see red dots on name tags, those are the members of our strategic planning steering committee, and um, we'll introduce them and, or have them raise their hands in a second. Um, but they can help during the process. As we're having our conversation, if you have questions or you're not sure where we are or what the direction is, look to them and they can help you. Um, and, we, and we've got some childcare happening down the hall, which you probably know, because other than very tiny, I don't see any kids, so we should be good. Um, and get food, this is very informal. It's meant to be a conversation, so feel free to get up and move around. All right, so a couple things to kind of ground the conversation today. Um, the first piece is our mission, um, and I think people know what this is, but sometimes it's helpful to remember where we are now, even as we're gathering information about where we might want to be. Um, so Washington Central exists to nurture and inspire in all students the passion, creativity, and power to contribute to their local and global communities. Some more grounding work that we would like to have everyone have in their minds as they talk um, is these are three pillars that kind of inform everything we do at Washington Central. Those of you that are educators and staff in our system, you see this you know, whenever we gather together, you see a lot of your PD tied to these things. Um, but all of our work falls under one of these three things, and that's academic achievement, safe and healthy schools, and humanity and justice. Um, so we want those things in mind as we do our work. And why are we here tonight? So tonight's conversation um, is part of our strategic planning process. These are some words, it's, you don't have to read it, um, but the purpose of this, um, this has lots of phases, but the entire thing is a multi-year process. But we are looking to have a visioning and strategic planning process that really emphasizes engagement and equity and lifting as many voices as we can which is why you'll hear me say lots that um, this is not the only event and it's not the only type of event because this is wonderful and, and it's not the only way that we can get um, voices from our communities. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. But the goal is to create unity within our system and really have a common understanding of what you all think our students should have as part of our educational system. Here are our steering committee members. Do you want to raise your hands, those of you that are here? Thank you. Um, this is a great group. We've had some really great conversations, um, and we will continue to have great conversations, and we learn from each one of them, and we'll learn from this event, too. Um, so really appreciative of those who are giving up time to do this. And this is just a little bit to ground you. This is our... Uh, timeline and process, right, well, we're here, but I'll go back. Um, this first phase is really about um, I, I, big funnel community engagement, kind of hearing from folks about really high level core values, what do we want for our students. This will move into a really iterative process of processing that, drilling it down, sending it back out for feedback, engaging with the community, getting to some strategic goals. So this is kind of the long-term process. This is where we are now. 
And just as a, a teaser, and, and we're, we are still working on making sure we communicate this out really well. We'll, we'll get better at that as we go. Um, we know that not everyone can come to an event, so we will have different versions of this. We will also, every question that you're about to react to is also going to exist in a survey form that we will bring to our communities. These are some school-based events between now and the end of the year that we will bring it to. Um, and there will be community-based events that, that are community events that we'll drop into. Um, we'll also have conversations about, do we replicate this in a virtual format? Do we, uh, do we have another event like this? So our steering committee will be debriefing after tonight. Um, but this is some, some information. So as you were walking in, and there's lots written on things, which is great, you were um, kind of reflecting on your core beliefs. So, what are core beliefs? What's a vision? I mean, people know what those words mean, but this is really about something that will give us a compass or a north star to help guide our decisions, guide our budget decisions, um, guide the work of what we're doing as we move forward. Um, and it's really important to be able to ground everything we do in what our community believes we should be doing. So part of our process is then turning that vision into action. So we'll be synthesizing words into a vision and core beliefs. We will send those back out to the community in multiple formats, um, and then we will continue to iterate. We know that we have opportunities and we have challenges ahead. These, uh, if for many of you, knowing these are why you're here. Um, others are new to the process and you're um, here to engage in it. Um, but our challenge moving forward is figure out how do we stay true to our core values and vision, build on what's already happening in our schools that's going really well, build on what we're already doing, but also respond to changing conditions. We don't have a choice about our changing conditions. We know we have enrollment declining. Um, we know that our communities are facing the same economic realities that everyone else in the state is. And there are some things that have nothing to do with us about how education is funding, funding that we've had and we won't have anymore. Those are things that we're going to have to figure out how to react to. So when we respond to those conditions, we want to be able to do that, keeping our visions and values in mind. Um, and it's important to know that we're starting this way because we don't have preconceived notions about where we'll end up. We know we've got some things we have to respond to, but we want to know what the community wants for our schools. So today, we want your ideas. I think, okay. I'm gonna pause briefly. Are there any burning questions that someone needs to ask because they don't understand and they won't be able to move forward? Yes. Are there <clears throat> positive things that, are, that we don't have no control over that might change? Um, if, you, if you go back to slide, yeah. you have uh, two slides. You have declining enrollment, economic realities, and funding changes. Are there positive things that could we'll that go in that bottom bucket that we need to respond to? Probably. Do you have an example in your head? It's a genuine, that's a genuine question. Yeah, I, of course. These are the conditions that we've been talking a lot about recently because they impact us and they impact us soon. But absolutely, the educational landscape in Vermont, I would call a positive condition. The, you know, I would love this, that's a great question also to weave into the conversation we're about to have. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Um, at some point tonight, you will go to four different tables. Every table has the same um, set of questions and you'll do the same thing, which means it doesn't matter where you start. Um, and the tables that look less cluttered, so not this one and not this one, um, are the ones that have the set of questions on them. The questions will also be up here and People with red dots will walk around to make sure you know what we're doing. Um, and although I think we fit nicely, we can bring down another table if it feels too crowded. I think that we're okay right now, but you're gonna go to four different tables. You're gonna get to have a conversation about a specific question um, and take notes on that conversation. You'll have about seven minutes at each station. I will time us and I'll give you a one minute warning. 
Um, take notes that capture the themes and highlights of your conversation. If you happen to be at a table and nobody likes to take notes, someone with a red dot will take notes. Um, let's see. A couple things as we have these conversations. We call them working agreements most of the time when you sit at a meeting. We have a set of norms. Um, we've tried to kind of modify this for this kind of event. Um, to the extent that you can, small tables hopefully makes for a manageable, comfortable conversation, but try to make space for all voices. Not everyone loves talking in this kind of setting. Try to stay focused on the question. There is a reason why these questions are the ones. It doesn't mean that you can't jot down other things that you want us to know. And actually, I can put up a parking lot chart paper. So if you really want to make sure that we get to something later, we'll make that happen. But try to stay focused on the question during the time that you're at the table. Be present to the extent that you can. And then just remember that we're, this is a big setting. We're, we're being um, recorded so people can hear a portion of our conversations later. Um, so just know that as you have conversations. You might have stories you want to share. Just be aware. We can't. This is not necessarily a confidential space. So. OK. So the first round says stay where you are unless you feel like your table is very full and you need to move. But the first round is the first question. It should be the top of your kind of extra big size paper. Yep, it says hopes and dreams. What are the hopes and dreams that our community has for our young people? And I'm going to set a timer, and you can start con your conversation. part of the community and some of that might be to um, sort of have the opportunity for individual exploration. Mm -hmm. I'm adding fulfilling next steps to this. These yes. are opportunities. <laughs> opportunities for exploration. Yeah. yeah. Individual exploration. You know, to figure out what that next step is your own Them to be valued for who they are. It's got so great moves. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love seeing how other people, like, it's like what their moves are with yeah. their babies, you know? Um, I'd like some working and positive models for conflict resolution and management. But you had something you wanted to share. 
just um, respectful of one another, and especially its differences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah, I think that's similar to what Especially, it's easy to be respectful of people you like, but what about uh -huh. people coming out and uh -huh. um, caring uh -huh. I think for me, it's like a safe and inclusive and supportive environment. Figure out. Um, okay, so so you said a safe, supportive, safe, environment. inclusive, supportive There's a piece of me that comfortable in their skin so that they're willing to take reasonable risks. I'm not sure how to phrase that. I think I think willing to take risks in life. I think that's yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever they might be. Right. Economic, social. Right. Yeah. Sorry. So that would be teaching them to get through conflict or our two, two minute warning here or in this part of the conversation. The kind of bouncing back. Yeah. That's a great word. Yep. Resilience. Yeah. 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 I think nobody knows how to really spell it. So it's just that Well, it looks like resilience. Resilience. Yeah, there's also a piece of accountability. Mm. Yeah. And you're feeling I I have to take a moment of that mind. Other things yeah. Okay. Bring us back. Thank you, Becca, for bringing us back. Should also be 
some joy in our doors. <laughs> yeah. Um, so finding some joy. Thank you. Would you like me to write for Bibbs? So you get a chance no, to okay. talk. I'm, I'm, can you? Can you add, like to do? Well, no, just Maybe add them to the joy, the yes. fun, like fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you said community, right? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I can read this back if you want me to. Helping our kids wade through this misinformation, become informed citizens and voters, become smart digital citizens and consumers. Also helping kids have a foundation in history, helping kids to feel a sense of belonging and connection. That all passions, expressions, and pursuits are valued equally. Uh, come to school open-minded, excited to learn and realize they are part of a larger community so they become life learners and learn to take risks. Perhaps they could have more opportunity to engage in real world. Okay, we are about to move. In order to learn more human skills and identify what those skills are. So you're going to move to a new table. Thank you for that. That's Thank great. You. This is always hard because nobody wants to stop the conversation. Remember when you move to a new table, the goal is to sit with a different group of people. So try not to move as a group. Try to filter yourselves around. I'll give you a minute to get settled and then I'll read the question. Yes. Uh, no, sorry. It's the it, everybody is going to the sec same second question. You you totally could. Okay. So the next question and and you've already done a little bit of this with the um, exercises you came in, but what are the core values that should guide Washington Central as we make important decisions. Core values should guide. It is a mouthful. As we make core values. No inclusivity. I'd like to start with kindness always. Kindness. Yes. Um, the whole child and the whole community. Oh, we can do multiple choice. I was. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking of something in terms of like student centeredness. Okay. What about you? You don't want to leave your voice out either. Uh -huh. I think integrity is important right now in the world. What was my other word? Integrity? Yeah. Ooh, knuckle yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Empathy. Which one? Empathy. Empathy. It's not on the list, I don't think, but it's going on mine. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's huge. Renee Brown doesn't have You must. She's a queen. One side is Elena Aguilar and one is Brene, so I don't know. She does not have it. I am. I was looking and I was like, is it not a, is it not a value? Is it considered a quality? We've got oh. inclusivity, kindness, the whole child, the whole community, student-centeredness, integrity, empathy. Core values. There's something about being able to freedom dream the future. So freedom to dream? Well, to dream into the future. Because I think that's what I want to say. Because uh, we have to start say more. thinking about... Help us understand what that means. Well, we can't be stuck in the standards that are now. They're kind of irrelevant for mm -hmm. most of our kids. Yeah, so what's next? Willingness to change? Is that related? Growth mindset right there. There you go. Growth mindset. Go, Ursula. My big number word. 
along that kind of creative thinking and just embedding in that what stages of development. So as we think about potentially shifting or if that's on the table, where are these students at in their development? What relationships have they formed? Are they particularly um, in spot like volatile in that particular time? And again, ask ourselves yeah. the question, why do we keep this group together? How does this, how does this make sense? Uh, are we doing all of this for budgetary reasons? You know, yeah. really just... This is your two minute warning. Again, two minutes, and then we'll switch. Are you saying that, is it, are you saying it's the root of this financial Right, yeah, and I think we need to interrogate that. Yeah, right. okay. Yeah. Um, what else? I like to add um, sustainability. I'm like thinking not just of environmental, but in, in like yeah. all aspects. But the idea that we're going to be doing this in perpetuity, and we need to set it up in a way that works for everybody from the students to the taxpayers, you know, in all different ways. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the, I think, positives. Like when somebody asked earlier, is there something positive yeah. that's on this list? We have an opportunity here to create something else. And I think a question that we should always come back to is how does this decision impact our students? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that, I mean, when you're talking about sustainability, and even if you look at it from an investment. Um, in terms of decision making, clarity, um, tra transparency. It's really important. Oh, you're tired. Especially decision making. Especially process. decision making process. Yeah. Yep. Stakeholders are involved. And to get a little bit nitty gritty, making sure that it's in laypersons. Everything is in laypersons' terms. So when you're thinking about every member of a community being truly able to understand, mm -hmm. not, I mean, I think educators can understandably um, use it. Master's jargon, education. language, <laughs> jargon, um, lingo, that can be difficult. Absolutely. Yeah. We've had lots of conversations about that as a steering committee yeah. already. 
study and actually what the, the way these questions okay. come about. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. right. We're trying really hard to Good. break them. I have a notebook of jargon. <laughs> <laughs> you can chuck that. So we're going to move to a new table. Again, mix your group up. All right. Thank there you. is a little prompt that says try to go two tables away from where you are now, but nobody's going to monitor that. Skills and qualities. He's going to have another one. That says critical, right? Because I think first we have to start. Perseverance, persistence, industrious, industrious. Just good old fashioned literacy. Literacy. Literacy, you know, I'm there. I mean, right, how nitty gritty do we want to, <laughs> how specific? Skills and qualities. Right, skills and qualities. Civic engagement. Oh. Yeah. Civic engagement. Yeah. Yeah. And, and locus of control, like um, knowing they can make a difference. like that. Is anyone here like on the floor? Anyone at the table? 
in that report. Okay. There's time, I bet. There's time. Sexual citizenship, there are all these things we can bring to our kids. Giving me the AI, which will only be increased. I'm deleting all my stories. Oh, well, you <laughs> don't doesn't, know. that doesn't make them go away. <laughs> but how you encourage kids to not take the easy way of AI. I mean, just because it's, it's, you know, it's just, yeah. Or we'll teach them how to use it in a responsible way. Right. I mean, there, there are pieces of it as an adult who struggles with spelling that I have fully embraced. <laughs> that are tools now that I didn't have before. And so how to use those responsibly. And ethically, <laughs> oh no! But I mean, there's other more AI tools yes. that are that that are helpful for for people who have different levels of learning. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true. Much of technology, I mean, our kids with autism can really fly, right? Yeah. Okay. Spaces. Yeah. 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 Maintaining space for the human. Maintaining space for the human in a hard time. Here's a degree now. This actually has us returning to your starting table. So you do actually get to sit with that original group again. Okay, so your last question is how will our young people know that Washington Central cares for and about them? Return, yes, and we can be flexible if people didn't. <laughs>
There'll be challenges. <laughs> 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 All right, so next question is, how will our young people know that we care for It's part of the now. They assumed that they were at the beginning. They did assume you can buy a lot of your money and then they all know what that is. I think so. Well, But there's a lot that goes into that, I guess. So, yeah, advocating for them. You know, they were well, respected by their teachers. Yeah. 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 Jane, we advocate. Well, give them opportunities. This is, is a challenge.
the opportunities they want. sit next to you all year and not know your name. It just didn't matter to him. You were fine. You talked to you. But, and I didn't, it was never this stranger danger or anything. If they're on our road, they must be safe. <laughs> That's what made it here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're going to wrap up. Wrap up this part of the discussion. I would just add maybe that um, they so I'm seen gonna even give just one, a couple even of logistics, when they're struggling. and then I'm going to pass it on to Floor for the closing activity. So again, the reason I'm showing this slide again is mostly to emphasize as you go back out in the community and remind people that this is not the only event, um, that we will have an opportunity to ask people those same questions and we'll have an opportunity to ask people different questions as the process evolves. So, um, and for those of you that have kids in schools, these are school-based events that we will have a table at and an opportunity to respond to this same set of questions. And again, we'll sort of have opportunities in the community for that as well. And I'll pass it on the floor. Thank you, Megan. So, well, first, thank you, everybody. It's so exciting to see so many people here that showed up and are willing to have this conversation with us. We have two questions. We put some post-its on the table, and we are wondering two things. First, in the post-it, if you would want to write, what did you hear tonight that leaves you encouraged or inspired? And then on your way out, you're going to paste that on that piece of paper there. Or you can also give us some feedback on what can we do better, so either one. And then in the last one, who do you want to bring into this conversation? If you would mind turning the paper in the back of the questions and writing, if you have any suggestions to people that we should make sure to reach out directly to the next one, that would be wonderful. Any questions? Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's double-sided. <laughs> um, you can write on the back of the number. Thank you. And if you run out of post-its, there are markers. You can write your thoughts, or you can consolidate your thoughts onto post-its. But the goal is just give us some feedback on your way out. And really, we appreciate you being here. Oh, and there's, there's still a little food, so please, on your way out, get some food. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It does mean if mean if you're you know if, you, if you're trying to have sort of the, the deeper conversations, if you don't have to be a hundred percent. You know, like I I ran for state rep last, last summer, and I would you know, probably in a, a day I'd probably talk knock on twenty doors, and maybe have two to three good conversations, but they could be really good conversations. You know, mm -hmm. that's yeah. you know you get a decent of you know you don't you, know, you don't need to. You know, you may be going after quality, not quantity. And if you have a quality, then you're likely to get their relatives and their friends and neighbors mm -hmm. then based on that one. One of the things that I'm concerned about, and I don't know, I don't know the specifics of who's in the room, because I don't know right. who's in the room, but the, the people who show up to these things tend to be disproportionately higher income. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to have a child here. Yep. Yeah. Option. Just that question and the sticking out next to it. Yeah. Yeah, these conversations can be intimidating. Probably if you are open to it, but you need to be asked maybe twice. <laughs> you need to be guilted in your life. I'm volunteering you. You're retired. The persuadable. Who are the persuadable? But how about the people who feel like they've already done this before? <laughs> Personal invitation. Yeah. People who have kids are There's still tax payers on the Yeah. Eighty five percent. So how do we get them? Thank you. I, I, that's <laughs> why I said it. Yeah. No. <laughs> So last step, um, when you're done, this and this will go on that table. Get your sticky notes on the poster sheet at the table and grab food on your way out. <laughs> so I'm very serious about wanting to have a cruise in the house, not just the house, because I'm the outdoors person. <laughs> I think what needs to happen is what's had to happen is, you know, like it's too, I came from this, it's a pain in the neck. I'm working on feeling like it's the last thing. Uh, I think. And but I mean, I can't even go to the pie breakfast. You know? 
Hey, I walked by your uh, building. You know, I've never seen it before. You no, no, no. Oh, my God. That would be a place to meet somebody and say we really like I think they used to do things that. It is such a late to do to come in. No, I know. I know. I know my husband was like, you're going back to Montpelier. I'm <laughs> 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 